Hello, this is Ray Main here again with today's Bible reading. Today we're going to start a, a new book. It's the book of Esther. One thing I want to say before we even start. This book is one of the, in my mind, one of the, uh, anyhow I like it, as well as any other book in the Bible. The main thing behind this book, the main idea in this book is uh, authority, personal responsibility, and obedience. You'll see that as we go through this. Number one, I think, would probably be personal responsibility. You'll see as, as we go through. All right. The book of Esther, chapter 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over a hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, Medea, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before them. I'm having trouble stumbling around today, forgive me. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days, in the court of the garden of the king's palace where were white, green, and blue hangings, fastened with cords of fine linen and purple, to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver, upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law, none did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abagtha, Zither and Sarkas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshitha, Shether, Admatha, Tarshish, Meres, Marcena, Mimican, the seven princes of Persia and Medea, which saw the king's face, and which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law? Because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. And Mamudakan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti, the queen, to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Medea say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the, of the queen, Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and to small. 
And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Mimican. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Well, that's the reading for today. Here we see part of what I was talking about. At that day and in that time, the king's commandments were law. To refuse to obey was almost unheard of. Now, I've heard a lot of people talk about, say, well, the reason she didn't, uh, you know, a lot of people believe this. The reason she didn't come in before him is because uh, the king had commanded her just to be brought with a crown. She was come in naked. That that doesn't say that. I don't believe it means that. And, and, it, and on the one hand, it really doesn't matter. You have to remember that the king was showing off everything that he owned. He was showing how rich he was. He was showing how, how uh, uh, I guess you could say, blessed he was. He was bragging. And he wanted to brag on his wife, the queen, because she was very beautiful. And he wanted to designate her by wearing her crown. But she refused to be, and you, you could say, well, she was right, you know, in, in doing what she done by, because she's not just a piece of fluff. Look, women's lip hadn't come along yet. You know, this was the law. Here's the key. This was the law. This is where the obedience comes in. This is the law. And she disobeyed the law. And as a result, she was put aside. That's the lesson for today. God bless you. Have a blessed day.